Hey, how's it going everybody? In this programming terms video, we're going to be taking a look at the difference between combinations and permutations. Now, combinations and permutations aren't necessarily just specific to programming terms. They're actually more mathematical terms, but uh, they come up so often in computer science problems that I think it's important for programmers to know the difference between these two. So what is the difference between combinations and permutations? Well, a combination is all the different ways in which you can group something uh, where the order does not matter. And permutations are all the different ways in which you can group some values in which the order does matter. So I think instead of trying to explain it in words, I think the best way will be to take a look at a programming example here. Now I'm going to be using Python for this example, but just like my other programming terms videos, it's not the language uh, that matters, it's the concept that you take away from it. So no matter what language you decide to use, uh, there will be a library available to you which gives you access to combinations and permutations. You're not going to have to write something like this on your own. Um, so in Python, it's this iter tools module, and you can see here that the iter tools module gives us access to combinations here and permutations here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you can see that I have a list here of one, two, three. Um, so first, we're going to look at combinations. So you can see here that I am taking all the combinations of my list and I'm seeing how many different groups of three there are where the order does not matter. So remember, in combinations, the order does not matter. So then I'm taking all those different groups uh, from the combinations and printing out C. So if I run this, you can already see down here at the bottom that the only group of, that we got from these combinations is one, two, three. Now the reason for that is because uh, this is already a group of three. So there's no other way that we can arrange this. So three, two, one is the same combination as one, two, three. It's the same group of values because the order does not matter. So to kind of drive this point home, let's change this to two values here. And now if I run this code, you can see that the different combinations here are one, two, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So there are three different groups of 2 that we can grab from this list. Now you'll notice uh, that we don't have 2, 1, 3, 1, and 3, 2 also because like I said before, the order doesn't matter. And when the order does matter, that is permutations. So let's take a look at this exact same example using groups of 2. Let me change this to a 2 here. And now we are taking all the permutations of the groups of two and then looping through that and printing those out. So if I run that, then you can see that we have one, two, one, three, and two, one, just like we did before, but now we also have the different orderings of those. So we have two, three, three, one, and three, two. So you can see here in the list of our output that we have one, two, and two, one. Now, if we were to use combinations, uh, those would be seen as the same combination because uh, 1, 2, and 2, 1 is the same group. And if the order doesn't matter, then it's only going to give you uh, 1, 2, or 2, 1, but not both. Okay, so why is this important? When would you ever use these in a programming problem? Um, well, I've come up with a couple of examples here that kind of shows when combinations would be appropriate and when permutations would be appropriate. Now, again, if you don't know what's going on uh, within the code here, then don't worry about what's going on in the language so much, but just rather the uh, concept that the examples are trying to get across. So up at the top here, I have a, a list of one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm taking all the different combinations of that list, and I'm taking all the different combinations of groups of three. And then I'm also taking all the permutations um, of groups of three from that list of six values. Now an example problem, of when combinations would be appropriate is if uh, someone asked you uh, the question, okay, how many different groups of three can you take from this list uh, that are equal to 10? So right here, I'm going to print out um, all the results within the combinations if the sum of those results is equal to 10. So let me go ahead and run this. And you can see that we got three different results here. We got one, three, six, which if you add all those up is equal to 10, one, four, five, and two, three, five. 
Now combinations is appropriate here because we're just taking the sum of these values. So we only want to know what values add up to 10. Uh, so for example here, 1, 3, 6, uh, we wouldn't also want the result 6, 3, 1 because both of those add up to 10 and it's the same values. So just to show you that example, let me replace combinations here with permutations. And let me print out all the permutations uh, that add up to 10. So if I run this code, you can see that we get a lot more values here and that we also have 136, which add up to 10, and 631. But most likely, the way that that question was worded, uh, it's better to use combinations because we only want um, the groups of three that add up to 10 and the order for us does not matter. So now let's take a uh, look at it, an example of a problem where uh, the order would matter. Now this is where um, combinations wouldn't be appropriate, but uh, permutations would be appropriate. So in this example here, I'm just going to make a very simple uh, word matching game to where we can see, so we have a sample word here, and now I'm going to see if any arrangement of these letters uh, is equal to this word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the combinations of these letters. I also get all the permutations of these letters. So first, let me show you why combinations wouldn't be appropriate in this example. So I'm going to replace that with uh, combinations. And for now, I'm just going to comment that out. And I'm just going to print all the different combinations here. So if I run this code, you can see that we only get the one combination of these six letters. Now you can see if I comment out this print statement and then uncomment the uh, working code here and run it, you can see that it says that it's no match. But this should be a match because there is a way to rearrange these letters that equals this word here. So instead, let's try this with permutations. So again, let me comment out this code here and just print out all of these values. So you can see that the permutations, all the different rearrangements of these letters, is a lot larger than the combinations of these letters. So uh, you can see how many there are here. So if you do do a problem, uh, coding problem with permutations, you want to be careful because uh, if I was to add more and more letters here and you take the permutations of more and more values, uh, those can uh, greatly increase uh, very, very quickly and you could be using up a lot of computing power. So just keep that in mind when working with permutations. But you can kind of see what's going on here. If we look at the results, then there's going to be a, a permutation of this word that's going to give us the correct value. So you can see here that we have um, this output right here is equal to our words. Um, so if I uncomment out this print statement and then uncomment the code here, what I'm going to do is just join that result together and see if it's equal to our sample word and a print match if it is. So if I run this code, you can see that we got a match. Now, both of these examples that I just used uh, could probably be written to be more efficient, but really I just wanted to show you uh, a sample problem where combinations would be appropriate and permutations wouldn't be appropriate, and another example of where permutations would be appropriate but not combinations. So. Hopefully after this video, you can kind of see the difference between these two and how you would use them uh, whenever you're writing code. So that about does it for this video. Hopefully that cleared up any confusion between the difference between combinations and permutations. But if anything wasn't clear or if you have any questions, then just ask in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for future programming videos and thank you all for watching.